this is basically our kitchen, and uh, uh, we have probably about uh, three or four cooks that like are willing to cook breakfast in the morning. And we have a hot plate here. We have a microwave. Uh, we also have a, an electric skillet in the back. And if, uh, most of the cooking that's done is usually in the morning or, or brunch. But then we also have seven or eight cooks who will cook for us off campus. And what they provide uh, for us is usually at their expense. But now lately it's been kind of getting, you know, their expense has been increasing. So. Uh, what they do is they ask us what, you know, they tell us what they need, you know, what they want to prepare. And mm -hmm. we have a pantry right here. And so if there's any ingredients that they need, they just tell me and then I put it out on the website. And before you know it, I got this whole table full of supplies and I got to worry about putting them away. And then the cooks come and shop the pantry and they take it home with them. Each of our cooks have got probably two crock pots. So they'll, they'll drop one off, pick the dirty one up, take it home, clean it up, fill it back up, and drop that back off. So it's just kind of it's constantly a rotation a rotating basis. If we don't have somebody that has, um, uh, like we've got a particular night where we don't have cooks cooking, we got frozen dinners in the, uh, in the freezer here, mm -hmm. and they just grab a frozen dinner and pop it in the microwave. We've got another microwave over in the dining tent. This is pretty much just for the cooks. We also have a storage area here for, for clothing and stuff like that, but we're wanting to try to reorganize this a little bit and put it over in the uh, uh, we want to kind of create like that shelving system we've got in the back over there. Don't be shy. <coughs> we want to uh, we want to kind of recreate that over in our GA hall, which is our general assembly hall, and uh, and store our clothes out over there. The fire marshal doesn't. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. He doesn't want the clothes in here. So. Yeah. yeah. It, does Chris have another tent here now? I believe so. Okay, I'm just I, be sure. I've been I believe gone. so. I've been gone. I'm just making I, sure. I think I think he uh, okay. I think he's cool. well. I think he was using a temporary tent. And then maybe we might have to set up set him up his tent today. All right, cool. I just saw him climb into Sample. Yeah, yeah, I think that's where still right, cool. But yeah, uh, follow me. I'll show you our general assembly hall. Oh, we got the Teamsters are helping us out with the recycling. Um, the city profits from whatever recycling they, they collect, but it's really a big savings for us because that way we don't have to worry about the trash. We got two totes out here. They try to get us two city totes for, for trash, but that didn't work out so good. So we do have to collect our own trash and take care of that, but other than that, it's, it's the totes, the, the recycling totes are got in. You guys got it set up pretty good. Yeah, these, uh, these structures cost $1,020. Uh, that's a $400 uh, structure over there that we got for 100 bucks. <laughs> so this is our kitchen. This is our general assembly hall. It's also our classroom. <laughs> Uh, whatever it needs to be, whenever it needs to be. It. How many people do we got staying overnights and stuff? Uh, typically, it varies anywhere from 10 to 15 people every night. Uh -huh. And uh, this is where we have our general assembly meetings, uh, community classrooms, you know, whatever. We try not to infringe upon the 6 o'clock time period, yeah. which is reserved for the general assemblies. That's Monday through Friday. And then um, Saturday and Sunday, we have our general assemblies at 2 o'clock, and the public's invited. Anybody who wants to come is more than welcome to come. Well, so it's we're a, we're a very open, transparent uh, organization, and basically everybody and anybody's welcome. So we we invite more and more people. And if if we fill this thing up and we gotta find an auditorium someplace to meet for general assembly, that's okay with us. <laughs> the more the merrier. We, we and and we want opposing views. We don't want to be an echo chamber. You know that's why this is a people's movement, not a political movement. It. It will probably end up being a political movement, but right now it's a people's movement. We want to get the conversation started. We want to have varying yeah. opinions, and we, we definitely don't want an echo chamber. So the democratic process becomes a little difficult at times during the GA assemblies. And well, it's come to a point where everybody understands that there is a problem. Yes. Okay. Yes. And, and we're all in agreement of that as far as where we go from here, you know. Yeah, that's what we're all, all what trying happens. to figure out. And we're in the process of creating our statement of intent. That's been uh, been going on now for about the last week, week and a half. Mm -hmm. We're hoping we can get something dialed in. We've got the preamble. I think the preamble is completed. Last I heard, in fact, from my understanding, they're planning on presenting the preamble to the General Assembly for approval, and then hopefully we can go on. We've got about eight uh, core uh, concerns that we want to bring forth, and I think uh, we're pretty much all unanimous in those eight uh, core Here things. Yeah, Moines local? Thing. Yep, yep, pretty much. Yep, we basically have taken all the occupation statement of intents across mm -hmm. the nation and the world 
and uh, kind of extrapolated some of the different things from theirs and then come up with a couple, two or three of our own mm -hmm. that are unique to the Iowa and Des Moines, Iowa area. Yeah. And so those will be put into the statement of intent, but I think it's going to be an awesome document. That's done. We, got a good, we got a good group of people working on it. We'll all cover you. Uh, this right over here, oh, like I said, these, both these were, like I said, $1,020. This right here, a gentleman come up to me about six weeks ago, mm -hmm. and he said, I want to help. What do you What do you want? I said, well, what do you got? He says, I got money. <laughs> I said, money's always good. He said, what do you need it for? I said, well, I, I, got, a, I got a vision. I mean, there's a 16-man, all-winter tent that they sell in Cabela's, and uh, man, I tell you, if that's something you can swing, I, I'd really like to see us get that. And he says, "Well, I tell you what, twelve hundred dollars. He says, if you can find somebody who'll match me six hundred for six hundred, I'll do it for you." And I said, "Okay, that sounds like a good deal." So um, uh, he ordered the tent, and uh, come time to uh, deliver it, uh, I had four hundred dollars of the six hundred dollars mm -hmm. that I owed him, but I didn't have the other two hundred dollars. And uh, he said, uh, well, don't worry about the other sales. He said, I got this. So he bought a $1,200 tent. That's love. Right out of his pocket. And oh, I thought that was awesome. Tennis. We got, we got three people. We got, it from the street. Yep. We got three people occupying it right now. And, uh, and that's winterized. That's set up for, you it, know, we have to, below we Iowa have to get, winters. We have to get heat. But once we pump the heat in, and in fact, you see these uh, areas right here. Uh -huh. It's actually designed for a chimney and a fire and a wood burning stove, but we okay. can't have that in a campground. For However, sure. we can pump heat in. So there's a panel that you can zip out on the floor right underneath here. So we're going to force air, heat into that, and then it'll be enough heat for the entire winter. And then hopefully, the, the heater that we're planning on getting will be enough heat to heat all three of these structures. So we'll have one heater heating all three of these structures, and then another heater just heating that one over there. Outstanding. Yes, it's going to be great. But let me have get some videos of that. Yeah, preppers would love it. Let's see if uh, there's anybody home here. I don't want to intrude on any yeah. privacy. Knock, knock, knock. Anybody home? Ray, are you in there? This is a great setup. Yeah, yeah, it'll work out good. What would actually be even better is if we could uh, if we could get cots and get people up off the floor. I think that would be a lot warmer for them. Yeah. But but so far and they're this making you move the tents every two weeks too. Aren't they? Yeah. Well, since and, until the ground freezes, but now that the ground is frozen, we're good to go. Okay. Yeah. As soon as we had our first hard frost, we don't have to move the tents, and we have had our first hard frost. Okay. So we've had to move them between. The time we started here, and the time, uh, and, and until now, we had to move them three times. But um, now the, the the dome, the round roof structures, we don't have to move those. They're kind of permanent, and the fact there's six stakes that are screwed to the ground three feet. Okay. On each corner, so no matter how bad the, the Iowa wind blows. You yeah, guys yeah, okay. yeah. They won't fall over. Good deal. They won't fall over. Let's go ahead. And, I don't want to disturb anybody. back up again. Yeah. It's awesome. And then these are windows and they got vents at the top for uh, for carbon monoxide ventilation, you know. Well, maybe we can get heat. some of our uh, preppers to uh, shoot you some ideas on how to how to winterize out here. That'd be cool. Uh, there's some guys out there if you don't know what Joe Comp is, uh, it's where they take the recycled old plastic bags with uh, with an iron and they do it in layers so they'll put six eight bags together and they'll heat that yeah. with like paper over the top of it and uh -huh. it makes a hard plastic almost like a sheen 
Oh. You can put those shingles together kind of thing and make structures and, and out are they Are they relatively fire retardant? Well, that's the problem. That's, that's what we're, that's what we're kind of, that's what we're, got to be more fire retardant than we can. Yeah, yeah, we, that's what we're kind of stumbled up across every now and then is the fire retardancy of the ground. Yeah, yeah, and I guess I've, evidently, I wasn't aware of it, but we've got some styrofoam sheets. And I didn't know if they are evidently fire retardants. So we have another. Oh, okay, the dining room. Yes, yeah, so this here's our dining room over here. A nice meeting hall. You guys can have some speeches here. And... Oh yeah, we have our GAs outside when it's nice out. Okay. Uh, but when it's cold. It's a great little park. It is. It's awesome. We got all, all the power. It's coming off the power panel. Here's our here's our kitchen. Hi, how are you? How's it going? This is our kitchen. Or the dining room? Uh, uh, yeah, our dining room. There you go. How you doing? I just find it. How's it going, Chris? This is usually where everybody kind of puts the, uh, the hot, hot crock pots and stuff like that, or roaster ovens. We kind of have a. Um... Sorry, man. That's all right. This is kind of where we. we, we Kind of lay out the food, and and usually we have hot chocolate and, and hot coffee and everything right over here. Oh, well, cool. We got a good group of people who are trying to keep everything clean and tidy for us. And entertaining. And yes. Entertaining. Oh, yeah. And uh, there's Kaylin. She's our medical person. She's a nurse, and uh, so she kind of helps with magic first aid. YouTube. She's yeah. got a. Oh, sorry. Winter season. She's got a. Uh, uh, first aid tent. Well, we can show you that over here. In fact, we're we're hoping to make a few modifications to it. Um, I, I was telling you that the the first four hundred dollars uh -huh. for that other tent over there, uh, I I had it, but I I kind of I, I, I snoozed a little bit too long. I didn't have a a Methodist church was supposed to be buying us a tent, and I couldn't put the brakes on that soon enough before they bought it. So this is the structure they bought for us. Nice. And uh, and it came with plans and blueprints, but we had to cut six pipes, 77 inches long. Uh huh. Well, it ended up being too short, <laughs> and it's too short by about this much. So if we had these pipes a little bit longer, we it it you know bring you it can about extend the tent out. So we had to go out of the feet, store. We had to go feet. to the store buy some more pipes, and okay, we'll, we'll get them cut to the right length and make this a little and bit longer. And hopefully, if we make it the right length. She'll actually be able to put another tent in here. And I, I guess this is my vision. I don't know if this is Kaylin's yeah. vision. Yeah. But if she could put another tent in here, that way she could have her dwelling. And if somebody's sick, yeah. we could kind of quarantine them in another tent inside like in here. A personal one man tent. And, yeah, and that way she and could tend to that sick individual. Stuff to organize you. And uh, you, you have to come in there and take a shot of that. So this is how I have that. Uh, this is our first aid station. Okay. Just for the minor stuff. Yep. Scrapes and bruises. Scrapes yep. and bruises. Yep. Have you been pretty toasty warm in here, Kaylee? Oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> I just put a little insulation because of the, yeah, the the wind comes underneath the bottom of the tent, and I feel that when I'm when I'm doing my prayer. So I do my prayer right there. I'm a Muslim, so I I do. Uh, I think that I think that's, that, gonna, that's I think the next thing to, to be done. We're either going to do that or see if we can get some more sandbags. Exactly. Yeah. Because I got a brick over there. That's going to be a necessity. Yeah, you're definitely going to yeah. need to winterize out here. Definitely, yeah. It's we've done a, we've coming. done we've done a little winterization, but we got to do way more than we already have. We could get people. To, I guess evidently somebody told me we we can buy sand relatively cheap and get the bags, and we can just kind of get a crew of people. Mm -hmm. I guess these are like three dollars a bag, and we can cut the cost down to about a buck fifty or a buck and a quarter a bag if we buy our own sand and bowl. Yeah. But we just got to get somebody that's willing to. Do that for us, and, and we got plenty of we got plenty of people out here willing to do some work. Tent, we just the, gotta you have the dead air space get in between the supplies, which self and the materials. The later. But yeah, we gotta put. I'd like to put a lot more sandbags around here, and as you can tell, this this doesn't go all the way to the bottom. So I like to put like two rolls of sandbags on the back side of both of these, and you can tell we don't really have nearly enough sandbags yet on these. This is kind of temporary. Like that doesn't even hold anything down. So yeah, we got uh, not on this side. So we got more work yet that we could do and get done. If we could get people to donate us some more sand and 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 bags. That'd be cool. But yeah, pretty much everything out here is private. Yeah. Tents. 
Um, and we got the we got another tent over here on the corner. I don't know what they call it. What's what's that called on the corner? Um, what the red sauce? What do we call? Hobo chocolates, what is it called? Uh, that I couldn't tell you. Well, I can't remember what they call it. <laughs> I haven't heard if they have a new name for it. <laughs> but anyhow, they got the... See this tent right here? Is it the dark one? Is the big one? Is yeah. that the one? That size of tent is inside this white tent. Okay. That's, that's winterized. Right? Yeah. yeah. So, in actuality, they got a big tent like that inside this, and then they got two smaller tents inside the bigger tent. So they're they're really uh, they're really bad. Yeah, we we we've got a better structure for that now, so we just kind of donated this to personal use. An occupier, fellow occupier, come from Newton, Iowa. He's seen this on somebody's curb, and he asked him. What are you doing with that? He said, I'm waiting for the garbage truck to come by and pick it up. He said, would you mind if we have it? And he says, not at all. So he loaded up his pickup truck and brought it out here. There you go. <laughs> so, That's how it works. That's community in action. Exactly. Thank you for the tour, Rob. You're I appreciate very, it. very welcome. Like I said, start your YouTube channel, connect your videos to mine, and you'll get some exposure. Awesome. Okay. I can do that. All right. Enjoy while you can, everybody. <laughs>